All right. So uh, you've lost, would you say, 16 pounds? Yeah. 16 pounds. And then, Alan, I think when I saw you last October, you were probably around the same weight as me, like 240, maybe. Well, yeah, I was almost at uh, almost 250. Okay. So you're around 245. And then what are you at right now? Uh, probably 215. So, boys, seems mm. like we've lost some weight. Yeah. We're feeling a little bit better, a little mm-hmm. faster, a little bit more nimble. Alan's got a kid now. He wants to run around because he needs to have excessive speed before he, the kid burns the house down. And he'd have dad athleticism. Dad yeah. athleticism. Oh, yeah. When's that program coming out, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> How to train for life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, monkey bar swings and yeah, one-legged hops around the house. Yes. Um, so let's, let's dive into the nutrition aspect of things. Sure. We can go with Alan first. Uh, I know you've made a video on (laughs) how you've lost all the weight in a very simplistic way. Mm -hmm. Um, but why don't we dive into that for maybe the average person who could be a dad, um, on a kind of a crazy schedule. And what did you do to lose the weight of that amount? I, it it was actually fairly easy for me and simple because, um, you know, in January or, uh, a, a year ago, I was eating a lot of food, ton of food. Cause I was trying to hold on to a lot of weight. And so once I just stopped eating so much, stopped stuffing my face, the weight just fell off. Um, now I will say that it's more difficult for someone who's eating, you know, 2,500 calories, still kind of hungry every day, but they need to eat 2,200 calories. It's a little harder, you know, but I was like stuffing my face uncomfortably because I wanted to maintain a heavy body weight. So when I finally, uh, it was when I had my son, my training was kind of, uh, all over the place, uh, suboptimal. I had to get in and get out of the gym really quick. My lifts were going down and I wasn't uh, freaking out about it. I just kind of expected it. And I remember, uh, I was uh, changing his diaper and then I handed him off to my wife and she walked away and there's a big mirror, probably like this, in his room. And I was uh, had my shirt off and I was standing there and looked at myself and I said, you look like shit. And so uh, at that point I realized, I think I'm going to stop eating so much and lose a little bit of weight because my lifts were going down. So I'm, I'm like, why do I need to stuff my face if my lifts are going to go down anyways? Mm-hmm. And to try to try to hold on to this body weight for what, you know, like maintenance of my lifts or like 10 pounds more on the bar was just silly. Um, and so I just kind of let the weight fall off and it fell off fairly quickly. And I just did that by not eating so much in that video. I talked about, uh, I think, I think I mentioned three things I did. One, I stopped eating so much ice cream. I stopped eating ice cream altogether because I was eating a lot of it. Uh, two, I would just have one plate breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I wouldn't go get seconds. And three, I stopped snacking so much. So I just ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So those were basically the three things that I did. I didn't mess with (laughs) macronutrients at all. I really didn't eat any differently other than the exclusion of snacks and ice cream. And I just ate a little bit less. And I did that. And then, uh, yeah, it's uh, now October. And I've uh, lost 30 pounds. Well, I probably started that in January. In January. Yeah. Um. And we, we can kind of go back with Amar after this little quick thought. Do you think, <coughs> excuse me, that a lot of people uh, maybe think that, oh, if I put on all this weight, I'm going to have a very substantial strength gain or get caught up in that mindset of, oh, if I just keep putting on the weight, my, my numbers will increase. Um, and is, do you find that, that it's often true or do you find that maybe it's not what it's all cracked up to be uh, in your opinion? I do think that increasing your body weight will <laughs> increase your lifts. Whether it's worth it, that's that's your judgment call. But I do think that an increase in body weight does help your lifts. And uh, uh, But I wasn't really interested in putting a couple pounds on the bar, especially because I couldn't train that hard. Um, so I knew that my, my training was not optimal, so I didn't need to match my food to like completely optimize my body weight either. I wanted to lose some weight because my strength is going down anyway. So I was like, this is, I guess, a good time. I'll ride this roller coaster down. Um, and uh, I would uh, frequently convince myself that one, even when I was 250, you're not that strong, you know? And then uh, I would say 
there are plenty of guys at, you know, this kind of goal weight of, oh, I'll get down to 225 or 220 to fill the 220 weight class. Uh, there are plenty of guys at 220 who lift hundreds of pounds more than me, even less than 220. And so I would convince myself that, hey, if they can do it, I should be able to get pretty close. You know, there's definitely, I was expecting this adjustment period and I'm still kind of in it uh, to get used to this new body weight. But uh, I still remained optimistic. I didn't say like, well, the, the best uh, the best is behind me. I was like, yeah, there'll be a small adjustment period. I'll ride it out. And uh, I think I can drive my lifts past what they were at 30 pounds less body weight because 220 is not a feather, you know, so. And then where were your numbers at comparatively uh, then and now from yeah. last year? I don't know. I haven't done, I haven't done singles, a single on my lifts <laughs> uh, or really tried to PR uh, since January. Okay. Um, I know that I'm training for a strongman competition right now and uh, I feel um really prepared and everything's moving in the right direction as far as those five lifts. And that's what I'm more concerned with. I have not been worrying about where my bench is at. Um, I've just been trying to drive up my push press, my Viking press, stone loads, um, car deadlifts, stuff like that. So have you felt different physically, like losing the weight? Like, have you noticed like, damn, like I, I do feel lighter. Or oh, yeah. Like I move better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not uh, constantly feeling like I have to burp or take a shit, which is nice. That's solid. <laughs> yeah. And then my clothes. It's probably, probably like underrated, but like. Yeah. It's yeah. Like you could it's, uh, I've noticed that flying is a little more comfortable. Like just losing. I lost like five inches off my waist. Wow. And uh, so just sitting like in a normal chair is more comfortable. Uh, my clothes fit more comfortably. And so that's all nice. Have you gotten uh, like any like health markers? Like, like I haven't done any right. blood work or It'd anything. It'd just be interesting. No. Yeah. 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 I'm cool. sure. It, I'm sure it improved. Yeah. yeah and uh, uh, pull-ups are a lot easier now. So wow. that's nice. I miss doing ton, like a ton of pull-ups. Yeah. Did someone say pull-ups? <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, that's there a we go. Perfect. Nope. Here we go. Off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let, let's hear let's hear your nutritional advice. Uh, I know you have Eric Helm, so I guess he's overseeing you, right? Yeah, loosely. loosely. I So I'm doing this uh, myself um, with his overarching guidance. If I want to get really lean... To the point, kind of like what uh, Alan said, where sometimes it's nice just to give your programming over to someone else, right? I'm not at that level of complexity where I think it's outside of my, not only outside of my control, but I don't want to deal with that mental hassle. Losing this weight has been quite easy. But if I wanted to get to the next level of leanness, and I think there are certain tiers and certain physiological markers, and it just gets progressively harder, I would absolutely use Eric just because it'd make that process easier. Mm Mm-hmm. So you guys have both been like, it's pretty easy. (laughs) So for the person who's saying, fuck you right now, this is very hard for me. I'm struggling. Uh, I've tried and I keep trying and it's not happening. What would be some tips of advice you would give to them to help them uh, get to their goal? Yeah. Uh, I would say first, it depends upon where you're starting. Uh, I brought up the physiological markers for a reason you want to get really shredded, it's very hard. I think the complexity increases the leaner you get. If you're over 20% body fat and you're trying to lose weight, I think even satiety single uh, signals are different, right? Um, you will get hungrier when you're below 10% in an absolute way. There's no doubt about that. If you're over 20% body fat and you have a good amount of adipose tissue and you're just trying to feel healthier. It's more psychological than physiological. And so that's a different conversation entirely. But I would say for people that have struggled consistently when it comes to the body composition, when you become food focused or when that becomes your identity, it becomes harder because you're placing all this extra pressure on uh, yourself. And there's two individuals. There's Danny Lennon um, and Cliff Harvey, uh, who we had on an episode about carbohydrates talking about the two different types of individuals when it comes to dietary compliance. And essentially, there's the all-or-nothing gang, and that's kind of the people I feel that fail. And then there's kind of the moderate. So when it comes to food now these days, I've turned more into a moderate. I never had a bad relationship with food. I was just more like, nope, I got to do this. Okay, whatever. For those that struggle that probably are more absolute, more all-or-nothing, I think changing the goal, kind of shifting the goalposts, as they say in in, uh, argument tactics, makes more sense 
because when you become food focused or when you think about food, you're going to become more food focused. When you think about your composition, it's subjective, right? You're looking at yourself. It's hard to be objective. In fact, it's impossible. It's not like lifting weight, right? Where it's like, I hit this number, I hit this number. It's like, well, how do I look? It's like, well, how do I think I look? Um, and so for those individuals, what I have found the biggest success with clients is turning into being more performance focused. Uh, and I think individuals that struggle with weight, you should not even make them attempt to focus on the weight. You should make them focus instead on habits outside of the gym, uh, in the gym in order to increase their performance. And then their composition will be a byproduct of their work in the gym. And then it'll reframe things for them for easier compliance. I think. I think that the most difficult part of losing weight <laughs> is kind of what Omar was talking about, but it's behavior change. Mm -hmm. And, um, you really do have to reframe your, your thinking. I've talked about this in a video also that, uh, for me, I would always associate being hungry with, uh, you know, a negative effect on my lifts. Like I'm hungry. Oh, I'm losing body weight. I'm getting weak. Oh, I'm hungry. I went to bed hungry. Tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow morning squat session is going to suck. Um, and so being hungry was always a bad thing, but I've just accepted that it's okay to be hungry. You know, I'll eat later tonight. Um, I don't always have to be full and I would associate being full with strength. Oh, I'm going to stuff my face and get so full and I'm just going to crush squats tomorrow. And so those were a lot of, um, I, I think s harmful narratives that I was telling myself. And so reframing my, my, um, you know, the story I was telling myself was really helpful. And I think as far as behavior change goes, um, if you, I would say some helpful tips would be, uh, Go to the grocery store once or twice a week. Get what you need to get. Follow the list and keep that in your house and don't eat out. As hard as that is, it is. It's not. Uh, it's not simple to lose weight or to change your behaviors. But I think that that that's helpful for me. If I don't have ice cream in the freezer, I'm not going to eat ice cream. And uh, if I don't have a bunch of snacks at home, I'm not going to eat snacks. If all I have is chicken, rice, and broccoli, I'm going to make that. And um, I think that if you uh, if you tend to be the type of person to go home, you just and to go home and I'll stop and get something to eat on the way. That's that right there is a decision you have to make to say, I'm not going to go get fast food. I'm going to go home, right, and cook food. And that would be kind of a, and that's behavior change. And uh, I actually knew a guy who was trying to lose weight. And um, he said that every time he drove home at night, he would drive by the donut stop and he was stopping in the donut every single night. And so he's like, I started driving a different way home just so I didn't have to drive past yeah. this donut shop. I swear every time I drove past it, I couldn't help it. I was stopping at a donut. So you just drive home a different way. So changing things like that is difficult, but it's necessary. Yeah, I, I wish I could remember the book that I read it in, but it talked about behavior uh, with eating and um, even like on work breaks where people would go and, and they would pig out um, on the work break, but they figured out that it was – not actually about the eating essentially, but the social aspect of being on a work break. And they tied that to like, oh, my friends. Um, so basically it was instead of going into the workroom to meet with the friends, it was just meet them outside right. like where there wasn't food. Um, so it was kind of like weird behavior changes such as that uh, where they realized that instead of taking in a donut every day, which adds up to X amount of calories, you know, whenever, um, they just gradually would lose weight or trying to change their social, uh, you know, environment. So that, like you were saying, it wasn't like the drive, like the guy, he just never passed that place that we never stopped. They never went into the break room yeah. and had two donuts just to talk with their friends. So it's like kind of diving like one step deeper. It's like, why are you doing what you're doing? And like, yeah, like there's some actual, like you can come to some realizations of like, damn, like maybe it's not about the food, but it's like, why, like where I'm at or something like, you know, like some weird stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, uh, one other helpful thing that I've <laughs> noticed recently with myself is staying busy throughout the day. So you're minimizing that downtime or that boredom mm -hmm. when you just want to eat or just go to the cupboard and graze, uh, or I'm going to sit on the couch and watch some TV and eat. Um, I, uh, oftentimes I'm so busy now that I've dropped to two fifteen, I've realized I don't really want to go any lower than this. And I have crept down lower. And so I kind of have to realize, hey, maybe you should eat a little bit more. Um, and I'll notice that sometimes I'll be at the gym so busy, especially since the move these past month, past six weeks, 
uh, I'll be so busy. I'll, I'll eat it, you know, four 30 or five in the morning breakfast. I'll go to the gym and then it's throughout the whole day. And I'm like, I should probably actually stop and go eat something or else I'm not going to eat until dinner tonight. Um, because I'm just so busy. And so really, if I was, if someone was to say, um, yeah, you got to fast for a week. Uh, I feel like I could do it because just cause I'm so busy and so preoccupied that I'm really not thinking about food much. Um, so it's helpful to stay busy.